Welcome to the Rusted Garden Homestead. Today's video is all about digging your first vegetable bed. It's the fall 2019. I want to get more people into gardening, so I'm going to show you how to set up a garden bed now, so come spring of 2020, you'll be able to plant into it. This is a raised bed. You don't have to use a raised bed. We're going to go into my garden. I'll show you examples of different beds, but I'm going to set this up so that you'll have some confidence and you can get this done now, and come spring, you'll be able to start planting with me. Now, if you've been gardening for a while, I'm also going to show you a trick that I've been perfecting over this season. This is shredded hardwood mulch, double shredded, nice and finely shredded. That's important because you don't want to use wood chips. But I'm going to mix some of this into the soil here, fill it mostly with the shredded hardwood, and then we're going to set it up with blood meal and bone meal, and come next year you can plant directly in here. This is the least expensive way to fill these raised beds, and it's really, really effective. I've had great results with that. This is a sponsored video. It's sponsored by Centurion Brand Gardening Tools. I'm gonna to talk about these three shovels. These shovels helped me build my entire garden this year. And you wanna buy a quality shovel. I'll go over the points on how to figure that out because you don't wanna end up with shovels that break. And I'm gonna go over the pros and cons of different shovels. Let's get out into the garden. I'm gonna show you some of the different kind of raised beds and then we'll start taking care of this and prepping it with the shredded hardwood. So this is a three foot by six foot galvanized framed raised bed. It's about 12 inches tall. And one of the reasons you may want to use a raised bed is it allows you to conserve your resources right in here. It creates a nice loose environment for the root systems to grow. And it also drains extremely well, warms up earlier in the spring. And if those issues come up in your area, a raised bed might, a raised bed might be for you. You don't have to use a raised bed. We're going to do some earth examples if you're just getting started and you want to just turn some ground. Let's walk out here or in here into the garden real quick. You can buy pre-made raised beds. There's no bottoms in these. I got these at Tractor Supply Store. The bed I just showed you was about $35 on sale and I just found it on Amazon somewhere. These are more expensive. They'll cost you a hundred and something, um, but they're nice and sturdy. And these have actually been filled. Here's an example of one that was filled with the shredded hardwood and these plants did really well over the season. If you don't want something that big, you can get a fire ring. This is a used for uh, starting fires and burning wood. No bottom in there, you could go with something like that. You can build a raised bed like this. This All this wood just came from Home Depot. A couple of screws in the side. And you wanna make these either four feet by six feet or four feet by eight feet. And the reason you do that is because your arms are about two feet long and you can walk around this without stepping into it, stepping into it and just tend to the garden. Let's come over here real quick. Here's some thicker wood, same idea. That's about eight inches high. These are two by sixes and two by eights throughout my garden. And that will cost you, you're gonna need one two by eight on the side here, one on the other side, that's two boards. And then you can ask them to cut it in half for you into four feet sections, so it's three boards. And that's gonna cost somewhere between 25 and $30, depending on where you live. Again, if you don't wanna go with something this large. These are all my fall greens. I've got garden fabric that I just took off. I'm going to be spraying and dusting these. You could go with something smaller and just create yourself a 4x4 four four and it works perfectly well. Now right in here I had great success with just growing in the ground and you just mound up your dirt. I put down cardboard here. That's going to get covered in mulch uh, later this year. But this is really about a three foot space. It's hard to tell coming through here. And it actually goes 20 feet down that way. And we just mound the soil up. So you could also dig your bed in the ground. All right, let's go back to the raised bed. Talk about principles for that. So we're gonna dig up the bottom. And a trick you can do is you can just throw mulch, dirt, even flour along the edges. And that's gonna frame out the exact size that we have to dig. We'll get that to that in a second. Now I've been using the Centurion shovels. I want to go over the quality. This, I really recommend this if you're going to get just one shovel. It has a nice high collar in here and what that does is it gives you the leverage you need so that it's not going to snap off. I've had plenty of shovels break right at the joint and typically I was buying 
Let's see if I can grab this. Shovels like this that have this longer piece on it, and you think that you can get a lot of leverage on it, which is true, but when it doesn't have enough metal coming up here, there's a lot of pressure here and I've snapped many shovels. In fact, this one has uh, broken in here and it's been relegated to just shoveling leaf compost and other garden soil I have come in. You also wanna make sure that you get something that has tempered steel, which this does. It's heavy, it's solid. If not, your shovels are gonna end up looking like this. And you're gonna to have to replace them every couple of years, sometimes every year, depending on what's going on. I also like the D handle. It's a much better grip and I can really, you know, get through the garden chores with this type of shovel. There we go. This is the mini. You don't need this if you're just getting started, but it's great for exactly how I am now, as if I was digging into uh, finished beds or I was dividing up hostas or other plants. I like something like this. I can really use it and leverage it for using all of my strength and doing the test that's needed. If you just have a little garden hand shovel, it's a lot of work. You do end up getting blisters sometimes if you're doing a lot of digging. The mini works extremely well. And then this is just your standard stainless steel shovel. It's rust resistant. Some rust is coming in that's normal. But if you can, stainless steel really will make a difference because you can see the rust that happens. Your shovels are going to wear out. I highly recommend the Centurion brand shovels for your vegetable garden. Again, I've been using these all season long and they've really helped me transform this landscape. So let me finish edging this out. We're going to turn the soil, we're going to fill the bed, and we're going to set this up with bone meal and blood meal. When you're using shredded hardwood, it's not fully broken down. So if I did this in the spring, we tried to plan into, plan into it, we didn't add in blood meal, which is nitrogen, bone meal, which is phosphorus, this is going to continue to, to decay, and it's going to take nitrogen and nutrients from your plants. So now that it's the fall, we're going to put it in here, we're going to set it up with nutrients, it's going to break down and it's going to be ready for a perfect planting come the springtime. So if you're just getting started, you don't have to build the frame. I don't want you to be overwhelmed. You can just square out a space, just roughly measure it out. Again, you can do three feet, four feet wide. And then if you're doing it in the ground, you can go as long as you want. Just make sure you have space on both sides for walking, reaching it, and tending it. Again, when you're buying a shovel, you want something that has a nice lip on here for your foot so you can really press in. It hasn't rained here really, except for a little bit today, for three weeks. So this is going to be kind of hard to dig into. If you have soil that's hard to turn, water it down the day before. That's why the lips are really important. And all you have to do really to get started is just turn the top a couple of inches. And you're just going to turn it over because it's the fall. This is going to die off. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it so over. If you're just getting started, it's the fall. Turn it over, loosen up the roots. You can leave it like this. Here's a trick that works really well. Is save your cardboard boxes. You want, you want to use plain cardboard, nothing with glossy finish on it. And you just size it up to the size of your, your space. I'm going to put this at the bottom of the raised bed when we get to that. And then you just want to drop some bricks on there and you can leave it just like this until the spring. Come spring, we'll put uh, trenches on along the sides, we'll mound it up and we'll get to planting. If you want to subscribe to my channel, I'll show you how to start seeds indoors, how to transition your seed starts outdoors, and really all the steps in between to get a great harvest and bring it to your kitchen table. All right, let me put the frame bed back on here and we'll get to filling this up with the mulch, adding in the blood meal, the bone meal, and setting this up for really a shredded hardwood raised bed. All right, the frame bed is back on there. And I cut the cardboard up into strips and I'm just gonna line the bottom. You don't have to turn the bottom. I like to because it helps kill off the grass, loosen up the soil, all that kind of stuff. But you could just go with dropping cardboard down and putting the mulch on there. 
Now, if you don't want to do shredded hardwood mulch, you can just fill this with a container mix, your garden dirt, maybe add in some peat moss or cocoa core. But the whole point to a raised bed is it allows you to focus your resources right into here. And you can fill it with whatever you want. But I found over experimenting that this double shredded hardwood, that's what you want. You don't want wood chips. You can see how fine it is. So how does this work? Take a handful of blood meal, which is predominantly nitrogen, and we're going to sprinkle one handful on this side, one handful on the other side, and we're adding in the nitrogen that the soil biology wants to break down the wood chips. And that's what it's going to do over the fall and winter. Put in a layer and just assume that I did this all the way across but for demonstration purposes we have what three or four inches here we're going to take the blood meal again high in nitrogen let me just double check it yeah it's a 12 zero zero handful through there handful through there you can throw in an extra one if you want and then just mix it in. We're giving the soil biology the nitrogen at once. I'm also going to plant garlic in here. Now, garlic is best planted in Maryland Zone 7 in the fall. It likes bone meal. It likes phosphorus to help the garlic bulb develop. So I'm putting in two or three handfuls of bone meal in here, which is a 2-14-0 and P and K. And two is always the number of nitrogen, 14 is phosphorus, and zero in this case is potassium. So you have your N, your P, and your K. Mix the bone meal in. And we're going to put in another three or four inches of mulch. That's not quite enough. Let me go get some more. All right, I got some more mulch. Three or four inches. You don't need to be perfect. Let's level it off. We're going to take this all the way to the top. And again, this is probably a three by three foot section. Two or three handfuls. A good amount. Same with the bone meal. Technically, unless you're planting in it right away, you don't really have to put the bone meal in there, but it's not gonna hurt. And again, I wanna plant garlic in here. Get rid of that cricket and mix this in. So as I finish this up and take it to the top, let me go show you another area where I did this and show you what's growing in there. So here are four beds that I set up just using the shredded hardwood. And it does need to be the shredded hardwood like I'm showing you, not big wood chips, shredded hardwood. That's gonna break down more quickly. It's fine, it has a lot more surface area. It's gonna break down more quickly with the soil biology. It's really, really important. Don't use wood chips. It doesn't have to be hardwood. Technically it could be softwood, but it just has to be wood that's shredded. So these are ornamental type plants. That's some lavender. These came out of containers. I just dropped the plants right into there so they do have soil around the root ball. These weren't set up with the blood meal and the bone meal. They are just getting fed water-soluble organic fertilizer. These beds were set up a little bit differently than what I'm showing you now. I used uh, a granular organic fertilizer. You can use any of them, whatever one you like, whatever's on sale. Um, the one I used here was chicken manure. So every four inches or so, handfuls of the chicken manure organic fertilizer, like I showed you, mixed it in. And then these are all seed starts. I started seeds. If you want to follow me, I'll show you how to get all, all your plants started in cells. We'll do direct seed sowing, all that kind of stuff for 2020. But they're doing really well. Every seven to 10 days, water-soluble fertilizer. We have lettuce, chives in front of that, cilantro, and beets. Okay, let's get back to the uh, bed we're working on. So here's the bed filled to the top. There's plenty of bone meal and blood meal to do. At least two other beds about this size. The last fertilizing, the blood meal, bone meal, goes on top and we just leave it on top. We're going to water it in in a second. I highly recommend the Centurion brand 
shovels, you don't want to go on the cheap and buy shovels that are going to break, damage, and rust out. Not only are these a great price, but more importantly, they are solid, well-designed tools, and they're going to last for years in your garden. So once you put down the final dressing of bone meal and blood meal, soak it in. You really want to soak the wood down. That's what the soil biology loves, nitrogen and moisture. So spend enough time not just watering in the top, but making sure you soak all the hardwood in here. And again, I'm going to be planting garlic in here in about two weeks. Garlic is not going to grow a whole lot between now and next spring, early next spring, in Maryland Zone 7. So the garlic cloves are just going to sit in there. As they're sitting in there, they'll get some nutrients from what's in there so that they can survive and establish. But this bed's going to be ready to give back to them in the form of N, P, and K come early spring. Thanks so much for watching. Please subscribe to my channel and I'll show you how to start your own garden beds and then take you through the entire process for 2020. Thanks for watching.